Good day to you all, my wonderful children. How are you all doing? Hope you're keeping safe and you're enjoying yourself at home with your parents and your siblings. And I hope you're keeping safe. It is very important that you all keep safe by always washing your hands under running water and using soap. And afterwards, use that um, alcohol-based sanitizer. These things are very, very important for us to do on a daily basis. Do not be caught unawares. Do not be caught not washing your hands on a daily basis is very dangerous. And if you must go out with your parents, make sure you use a nose mask. All right, it's a pleasant day to you again. And it, we thank God for the opportunity to be able to come online to teach you via this medium. I hope you've been able to assess all the notes that were uploaded on the school website. And you're, I hope you're also watching um, what, what, the videos that were put online as well. All right, today the subject we shall be looking at is omeconomics. And the topic is grooming and care of the body. All right, let me take you on a journey as we go into another interesting topic today. But before we go ahead, it is very important for me to let you know those things you expected to learn or those things you expected to have learned at the end of today's lesson. All right, first of all, I told you that today's subject is omeconomics, and I said grooming and care of the body is what we're looking at. And this class is for primary six opioids. And this topic is for week five. All right, quickly, let's go into the learning objectives for today. Now, the learning objectives are those things that you expected to have learned or those things you expected to learn, know at the end of this class. So at the end of this class, each of you should be able to identify part of the body. You should be able to identify. I know, it, 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 I mean, it won't be funny if by now, in year six, you don't know, you can't identify the part of your body. You don't know what your public part and what your private parts are. And the, according, and you should be able to identify them and call them according to their names. Like I keep telling you in class, when we do um, omicronomics and we have to do body part, please call the body part by their names. Don't be shy about it. It's your body part, all right? So when you're shy about it, and these are um, pedophiles can take advantage, they see you as being shy, they see you as um, being timid, you know, be bold is your body part. You should know what your body, I mean, you're able to identify your body part and call them exactly by their names. Is that okay? So you should be able to identify the body part then number two, you should be able to explain how to care for our body daily. How do you care for your own body daily? Are you making sure that you have a regular bath on a daily basis? Do you bathe daily? Do you use clean water? Do you use clean towel? How often do you wash your towels? So these are many more which I'll be discussing today. And number three, you should be able to mention the reason why we take care of our skin daily why do you take care of your skin why do we have to take care of our skin why do we have to bathe daily why do we have to apply cream and maybe you don't even apply, apply cream at all all of these we shall be discussing and lastly you should be able to list body care materials and explain how they are used all right welcome again to another exciting class so come with me as we go into today's class in details first of all I would like to show you a picture here. Look at this. This is Minnie Me. Whatever, you know, you can give her whatever name you deem fit or whatever name you like. But I like to call her D Me. Did I say Minnie Me? Yes. This is Minnie Me. All right. Identification of different parts of the body. All right. This picture is here to show you the different parts of our body. You can see up here is our hair. This is the hair of Mini Me. That's her name. All right. And this arrow is pointing to our hair. 
This is ahead. This is ahead, right? How many years do we have? Two years. We have two years, all right? That's those are the uh, ears. Now, right here is the tooth, all right? Singular is tooth. One out of your teeth is tooth. While the whole set of your dental, your the whole set of your dental is your teeth. Don't mix it up. The T E E T H is your teeth. That's the whole of your dental, you know, while one of it is your tooth. All right, I hope that is clear. And over here is our tongue, all right? That's your tongue. Uh, your tongue, in case you don't know, all right? And over here is our neck. That's our neck. This is my own neck. I hope you can see it, my neck. All right. So, and this is our arm, my arm, my arm. All right. And over here is our leg. You can see that. And those are our toes. All right. On our toes, I mean, on our foot. All right. This is one foot. Of course, he has two feet. Don't get it. Don't mix it up. The two are feet. That is plural. While one of it is a foot. Right? So on our foot, she has toes. On each of our foot, she has five toes. Right? Five toes. Now, the two feet, she would have ten toes. Is that clear? Now, over here is an eye. We have two eyes, obviously. Is that okay? Two eyes. And over here is our nose. This is my own nose, right here. Ping, 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 pong. That's my nose, right? And here is our mouth. In your mouth, you have the teeth, you have the tongue, all right? And inside, you have the lungs, okay? So, in your mouth, all right? Then the shoulder. Here is my shoulder. Here are my shoulders, all right? My shoulder and the hand, my two hands. We have two hands. The fingers. Now we have ten fingers on our, on the two of our hands. Okay, and we have our knee. So that is the part of mini me's body. The same applies to you. The everything we have mentioned here is the what your body is made up of. Everything we have mentioned here is what your body is made up of, all right? So if you're able to identify the parts of mini-me, definitely you know your body part. All right, so let's go. We have looked at mini-me's body part. Let's look at another person. It wouldn't be fair if we looked at a female body part and we don't look at a male. Now, we're not talking about internal organs here. Neither are we talking about respiratory organs. We are talking of body parts. The same body parts that you that a male have is the same body part that a female have. It is now when we're now going into internal organs or respiratory organs that we that that we have differences in male and female, either reproductive organ or other organs. I hope that is clear. For instance, the reproductive organ of a male is different from that of a female. All right. We all know that the reproductive organ of a male is called what? The reproductive sex organ of a male is called penis. Why the reproductive sex organ of a female is called what? Vagina. All right. So I also know that the reproductive sex cell of a male is called spermatozoa or the sperm while the reproductive sex cell of a female is called what ovum or eggs are you getting it? but here we are only talking about the physical body part all right not the reproductive organ i hope that is clear so everything we have mentioned about mini me the girl we are also going to mention here okay i hope that is clear and now so let's go ahead Starting with eyebrow, yes, everyone has eyebrow, everyone, everyone. We all have eyebrow, okay? So eyebrow is this, this is your eyebrow. I'm not talking about eyelashes. The, the eyelashes are these ones, the one that female will usually apply mascara, all right? This black stuff. So, but here is your eyebrow, all right? The one above your eye, 
So that is the eyebrow, right? So this is his eye. This is his eye, and that is his ear, and this is the cheek. All right. We also we are both male and female. We both have cheeks. So here is our cheeks. Can you see? So cheek. Some of you don't even know this thing. You don't know that these are your cheeks. And we also have chin. The chin is right below your cheeks. All right. I'm also going to show you over here. So that's the cheek. And here is his nose. I showed you the nose earlier on. And over here is his mouth. Over here is his mouth. Right there is his chest. Male, we, all male have chest, while all female to have chest. Is that okay? So, right here is his hand. Over here is his finger. Right there is his leg. Now, we have two legs. I explained that earlier. And on each of his um, foot, he has five fingers. I already said that. So on each um, on both feet now, he has um, ten fingers. So his foot, right? His knee, his stomach. Both male and female have stomach. Is that okay? We both have stomach. So that's where your food goes when you eat. So that is the front view of this boy right here the front view of this boy right here let's look at his back view over here is his head that is his hair and that is his neck i showed you my own neck the other time and over here is his shoulder here is his back and that is his hand that is his elbow this is your elbow elbow right so right there is his bottom bottom or buttocks we both have buttocks okay and there is his ankle. Before, before your um, feet or before your foot is your ankle, all right? And back of your ankle is your heel. So that as those parts that were not mentioned or that were not identified in the previous mini meat picture have been identified here. So every body part has been identified and named is that okay so you can't tell me if you it's if you if i point to a part, a part of your body and ask for for you to identify and tell me the name of that part of your body you should not tell me for instance if i ask you show me your heel some of you don't know show me your chin some of you don't know show me your jaw some of you don't know and over here is your jaw so please you need to be able to identify and name your body part appropriately all right Call them appropriately according to their real names. I hear funny things like some of you uh, in your homes, when uh, you're talking about your private part, I hear something like saying antenna, tontolos. Please don't give your body part funny names, all right? Call them by their names. How that is clear, all right? That is to avoid um, anyone trying to abuse you. If you are confident about your body part, you call them exactly the name they are called. It will be very difficult for any pedophiles. For instance, okay, let me explain who, um, who a pedophile is. A pedophile is someone who enjoys or finds pleasure in having um, sexual intercourse with children, underage, with children, you know. So please call the, um, your body parts exactly the name they are called all right so let's go how do we care for our body yes if you can identify your body it is very important for us to learn or know how well or how best to care for our body that is why some people go about with very offensive body odor very you know disgusting body odor right is as a result of improper care of their body some people don't care for their body now so we're going to be talking about how we care for our body right here the following are the ways to care for your body daily one how do you care for your body you must eat balanced diet what are balanced diet or what is balanced diet balanced diet is a class of food that contains the six classes of food. Is a food that contains the six classes of food. And what is that? That have six classes of food in 
eat right nutrient and eat right nutrient. I said balanced diet is a diet or food that contains the six classes of food in their right proportion with right nutrient. Okay, what are the six classes of food? We have carbohydrates, we have protein, we have vitamins, we have minerals, we have fat and oil, and we have water. Those are the six classes of food. I repeat, carbohydrates. Carbohydrate is energy giving food, and the sources of carbohydrates are food rich in starch, like for instance, yam, um, cassava, gari, um, bread, etc. Those are um, carbohydrate rich food. And I said protein. Protein are body repair food, body repairing food, all right? Your protein helps to repair worn out tissue or help to regain or replenish your, your body. Now, examples of food rich in protein are fish, meat, eggs, milk, etc. Now, I also said we have vitamins. What are vitamins? I don't want to hear vitamin. It's not vitamin. Vitamins. So vitamins are food that help to fight against infections and diseases. So they help to build your body um, antibodies. They help to um, fight against infection or any strange thing I mean, coming into your body. And what are the food rich in vitamins? Fruits, veggies. What do we call veggies? Vegetables. All green leaves and fruits are food rich in vitamins. Oh, I also said fat and oil. That's, an, that's one, another class of food. Fat and oil, you know, fat and oil helps to um, resist cold, all right? They help, fat and oil help you resist cold, but it must not be too much. You mustn't consume food that are rich in fat and oil in a large quantity. It also has disadvantage. It can block, it can start blocking some of your arteries and prevent the improper flow of blood to every part of your body. So you should reduce your intake of food that are rich in fat and oil. So let me give you an example of food that are rich in fat and oil. You have your margarine or butter or uh, cheese and, and you have vegetable oil and um, palm oil, the one you call red oil, all right? So those are food rich in fat and oil. We now have water. What is water? Water is a colorless and odorless, tasteless liquid substance that is taken to break down food substances into smaller particles. I repeat, I said water is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless liquid substance that is taken into the body to break down food substances into smaller particles. Water is also used for digestion. Water aids digestion. Water helps your food to digest properly. So that's when, that's why if you finish eating, it is very, very important for you to drink water. So um, it is even advised medically that you should take at least four liters of water daily on a daily basis. It helps you to uh, flush uh, toxic substances out of your body. If you take water, it's... Um, flushes some um, toxic substance that shouldn't stay in your system out through your urine. Is that clear? So eat balanced diet. Another one, bathe regularly. It is very important. If you don't bathe regularly, you're going to, especially those of you that are teenagers, those of you that have gotten to puberty stage, you are adolescent. That is the stage where you start experiencing physical changes in your body. For example, growing air in your pubic region, in your armpits, and in your, um, around your um, private part, all right? And when you are at this stage, you should learn to 
take good personal hygiene. Else, if you don't shave, if you don't bathe or use roll-on, you will definitely smell. And you don't want, you wouldn't like it when some people are like, excuse me, can you stay away? Or, I mean, or people just moving away from you as a result of your body odor. So please, it is very important, especially those of you um, who have attained puberty, who, who are adolescent already, teenagers, please and please always bathe regularly. I advise bathe twice daily, in the morning and at night before going to bed, the last thing before going to bed. So, and again, brush twice daily is very important. Some people have bad breath. You can overcome it. See, home economics, the essence of this top, I mean, this subject is for you to be taught. You can see, this is not, this is practical um, lessons. Things that you must do on a daily basis. It's part of you, it's your body, not mine. You take care of your own body, I take care of mine, all right? If you want to look radiant, you want to look beautiful, all right? You should take care of yourself, all right? So you should brush twice daily. You don't want to come to school in the morning and your friends are around you and they say, hello, hello, Tamara. And you say, hello. And your mouth oozes out, offensive odor. People will run away and you'll be identified as the girl whose mouth stinks. Do you like that? How would you like to be called that? I know none of you will want that. You wouldn't like to be called a girl or a boy whose mouth stinks. So please brush. How do you brush? You take your toothbrush in the morning, put your toothpaste, whatever toothpaste you want to use, uh, and you go up, down, up, down, up, down, into the corners, outwards, into the corners, up, down, up, down. And there's, there is one thing that gives you bad breath. There's one thing that makes your mouth stink. Most of you don't concentrate on washing your tongue. Your tongue, yes, please, as you're brushing your teeth, up, down, up, down, reach into the corners. Now, you know we have about four sets of teeth. We have our canine. That was in, yeah, in front. We have C's, incisors, we have canine, we have premolar, and we have molar. Those ones inside, your teeth, those ones inside that we cannot really see unless you open your mouth wide, those regions are where you concentrate more. You know why? Because particles of food that you are eating the night before would be stuck into those parts. For instance, if, you, if you're eating yam, if you're eating beans, and you didn't brush before going to bed, the particles of those food, what do we call particles? The, uh, the, the part of the food that you have chewed, that are not properly chewed, or the ones that did not um, go down your esophagus, you know, will remain at, will get stuck at those parts. And if you don't brush or you um, rinse your mouth with water before you go to bed, what happens is that those particles will be fed upon by what we call catalysts or enzymes. All right, that brings us to another, let me quickly explain. I have mentioned two things, catalysts, enzymes. What are enzymes? We all have these things in our mouth, our body. Now, while you are asleep, that is when they are awake. What they do, that's why when you find out, have you ever wondered when you were going to the bed the night before, your breath was good, but by the time you woke up in the morning, I say, good morning, mommy. Your mouth oozes. Mm, bad breath. Mommy will say, go and brush. I tell, I tell my son up the first time, mm, your mouth oozes and my daughter too. It is not their fault, it's not our fault. What happens is that while we're asleep at night, these enzymes will come alive in our mouth. They are unseen organisms that are active when we are not talking, when our mouth is not moving. So they will now begin to feed on those particles that are stuck around your teeth in the inner part, 
and they will begin to decompose them. So decompose them is break them down, break them down, and those things now, those particles now begin to emit, um, um, emit and come up with bad odor. So by the time you now wake up in the morning, those enzymes are finished working. So enzymes are catalysts that speed up the rate of chemical reaction, or enzymes are chemical substances that speed up the rate of, no, okay, catalysts are chemical substances that speed up the rate of chemical reaction, or enzymes too are chemical substances found in, in our mouth and some part of our body, all right? So this is what happens. So that's why it is advised before you go to bed in the, at night, brush, that will take care of those particles that are stuck around your mouth. So next one, wear clean clothes. That's very important. Do not, if you must repeat a cloth that you wore the day before, you have to make sure that, for instance, as I'm talking to you now, after the work of today, if I want to repeat what I'm wearing tomorrow, it is very important for me to make sure I sun dry it, put it out in the sun for it to get dry. Why? To take care of some sweat. I would have sweat on this. And if I don't sun dry it, to make sure that I put it out in the sun for the sun to heat it and kill the sweat. And I mean, suck dry the sweat. If, that, if I don't do that, the sweat that has been left on this clothes will smell if I wear it the next day, especially if I don't wear cologne. Don't want to ask me what cologne is. Perfume, those things that you use, fragrances that you use that gives you good smell, all right? So if you don't wear perfume and you want to repeat the clothes that you wore the day before, you will smell and you don't want that to happen. So another thing is wear clean clothes. If you can't repeat the clothes you wore the previous day, please wash it, wash it, all right? Wash it and iron them, make it look neat and good. Now, that brings me to your uniform. Some of you are, you, 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 you don't do good, you know, which are your school uniforms. And in year six, you should be able to get home after school and wash your uniform. Some of you have washing machine. All you need to do is just pull off your school uniform, put them in the washing machine and wash them. But no, what we find most times happening is that you come to school in your dirty uniforms. And that is not good. It's a private school. You should leave by example. You should and be an example to people around you. Let them ask you, oh, what school do you attend? By the way you dress neatly, well ironed clothes, people will like you. You look smart, right? So please, wear clean clothes. And fifth one, wash your hands before and after eating or going to the toilet or after going to the toilet. Now, please, before you eat your food, wash your hands with soap and water. When you're done eating, wash your hands again with soap and water. If you visit the toilet, make it a daily routine, make it a ritual, yes. Make it a ritual that whenever you touch dirty surfaces or go to the toilet or you touch animals or carry animals, please wash your hands especially now, especially now that we have coronavirus everywhere. So if you have touched a surface, any surface at all, as soon as you get home, the first thing you should do is wash your hands with soap and water and sanitize your hands, all right? And before you eat, please wash your hands. After eating, please wash your hands. If you go to the toilet, please wash your hands. Now. It is very important that you wash your hands like every other time, all right, at interval. Okay, so that's how we care for our body on a daily basis. Now, so let's now go and look at why do we care for our body? If we have looked at how to care for our body, why do we need to do all of these things? Number one, the following are the reasons why we take care of our skin daily. 
One, to make our skin glow radiantly and beautifully. If you want to make your skin glow like mine, oh yes, my skin is glowing. Argue with your laptops or your phone, device, whatever device you're watching me through. Argue with it. Yes, my skin is glowing. Don't be jealous. Yes, because I am taking care of my skin. I make sure I bathe regularly, twice daily actually. Okay, so the reason why we do all of these things is to make our skin glow radiantly and beautifully. You look younger than your age. If I tell you my age, don't guess. Don't worry, I won't tell you. Okay, ask Google. All right, so the next reason why we should take good care of our body is to remove body odor. I think I've explained a whole lot about this. If you don't want to smell and you don't have money to buy cologne, cologne like roll on, like body spray or perfume if you don't wear perfumes or you don't use roll on and you still want to take care of bad odor please bathe regularly especially in the morning and at night before bed that will take care of offensive or bad body odor number three why we take care of our body is to stay healthy if you want to stay healthy you have to take good care of yourself you have to eat balanced diet you have to bathe regularly you have to wash, I mean, you have to wear clean clothes and you also have to either cut your nails, have a clean shave, all right? Use cologne, all right? Then the last reason why we take care of our body is to prevent skin diseases. Do you know there are skin diseases everywhere? Rashes, eczema, acne. Acne are those dark spots all over your face. They are called acne, all right? And if you break them, they turn black, pimple, and the rest of them. Those things all over the body are what we call body diseases or infections. Now, so let's go to the next thing. And someone, a, a, a doctor who specializes in, yes, that's what I was going to say, a doctor who specializes in diagnosis and treatment of skin diseases and infections is called a dermatologist. Should you have any skin infection? Should you have anything coming out of your body like rashes and all, and you can't explain what is going on? The best doctor to see who is a specialist um, in diagnosis and treatment of skin diseases and infection is a dermatologist. What did I say? A dermatologist. What did I say? A dermatologist. Who is a dermatologist? Yes, you, yes, yes, you looking at me. A dermatologist is a doctor who specializes in diagnosis and treatment of skin diseases or infection. Is that okay? So they will look at you and know what the best treatment to give to you and you'll be fine. All right, let's go to the next thing right here. So body care materials. Now, if we must take care of our body, we should also use some items. Those items that are used on a daily basis to take care of our body are mentioned here. So we, what? are body care materials. Body care materials or body care items are those things that are used in taking care of our body, used to keep our body clean, used to make our body smell nice or nicely. Those things are what we call uh, body care material. So I said here that these are materials used to make our body clean and smell nice to make our body clean and smell nice, all right? So an example of those body materials, body care materials are water, soap, sponge, comb, cream, brush, powder, roll-on, perfume, towel. Now, let me quickly run down the process you go through using this thing. In the morning when you wake up, the first thing you use is what? Your toothbrush and toothpaste. You brush, I've told you how to brush, up, down, up, down, and reach into the uh, eating region. And when you're done, you take your sponge and soap, wet the sponge, apply soap, and use it to scrub all your body parts, especially the pubic region, right? Your private region, so that you won't have dark coloration or brownish coloration. Some people will raise, if some people raise their armpit up for you, oh, the whole, I mean, People will just run away. So that's because they don't take care of those body parts. 
in a very good way. So you you use your sponge. I'm talking to you, especially you teenagers. Wash thoroughly your body part, and when you're done, use a clean use water, clean water to rinse off the ladder of the soap. And when you're done, get a clean towel, towel dry your body. And the next thing is what? Apply your favorite cream. Those of you that use this cream, you apply your facial cream. If you're a girl, you, you, you must have braided your hair and you can just brush it, wear your clothes. If you're a boy, you can comb your hair or brush your hair. If you must apply powder, just put a little on your palm and apply to your face. No, apply powder that will make you look like a masquerade. <laughs> All right, so that is how. And then if you have roll-on, you can wear roll-on or wear PEF. You don't spray PEF. I have corrected this expression several times. You wear PEF. Somebody want to ask me, uh, uh, Mr. Ogunaru, is PEF like clothes that you wear in, on, in, in your body or on your body? How can you wear PEF? Yes, that is the right expression. We wear PEF. We wear perfume, we don't spray perfume. You only spray insecticide, all right? Chemicals that are used to kill insects or kill um, unwanted plants called weeds are what we call insecticide, herbicides, or rodenticides. So you spray those ones, you spray chemicals. You don't spray perf, you wear perf. And that brings us to the end of today's class. I hope you have learned a whole lot you know, about your body, how you have to identify every part of your body and call them exactly by the way they are called. I beg you, call them exactly the way they are called. And you should be proud of yourself, be proud of your body because it was given to you by God and you were fearfully and wonderfully made. And so you should not be shy of any of your body parts. Do not allow anyone to put you down or talk you down about your body part. Make you feel like you are less important or you have not been um, 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 created well by God. Every creature on the surface of the earth has been created well by God. So you are beautiful, you are handsome, you are good looking, you are the best of you that's ever been created. All right, until I come your way again for another interesting topic, I remain Mr. Ogularu, and I will like to remind you that um, another test is coming up um, pretty soon. That will be on the 1st of July, and it will run through to 7th of July. Please prepare and prepare and prepare, especially those of you in year six that I'm teaching. Your exam is fast approaching, and we are hearing information that um, those of you in primary six, GS3, and SS3, will soon be allowed um, to come write your exams. So for, put your ears to the ground. What that means is that be open to information, listen to news, read newspapers, and get information, all right? Um, stay safe and be careful. Always wash your hands on the running water, apply hand sanitizer, and if you must go out with daddy and mommy, please make sure you're using a nose mask. I love you all. Bye for now.